Okay, here I have a Hitachi amplifier, HA410, probably from the 70s this one. There's one I bought second hand. It was out of a pile of old audio units, some in pretty poor condition. So I don't know whether I've got a complete dud here or a bargain. I assume it's definitely not going to work. And I haven't even looked inside it, but I'm hoping it's not going to be all corroded or anything. Some of the stuff didn't look too good, looked like it had come out of a shed or something. I think I did have a quick look through the through the vents and, it, and the case and didn't look like there was too much rust or anything on it, which is a good sign. It's got the old like hammer tone or whatever finish on it. So we'll see what on earth this thing looks like inside. It looks like all the outputs are there so no one's pulled all them out or anything. It's fused, this looks maybe like it's been stressed out a bit, or maybe blown. So what have we got here? These are Hitachi, you know, just normal transistors. They're not MOSFETs or anything exciting. It's got a decent sized transformer in it. I would say this would be a good 50 watts a channel, or getting there. Decent sized 3 amp diodes or something, so it's not a little toy one like that Sony one I looked at. It's a little bit more powerful. No, in here has a nice looking front on it, and it definitely needs a good clean. It's got scratches on the knob, which are going to be hard to get off. Actually, got an LED in it, maybe. So, I guess the first thing to do is bury my multimeter from under cassettes and stuff. And we want continuity. Yeah, I thought that fuse is blown. It looks like it does have a gap in it. I think that one might be too, yes. I don't know, I might just make it a bad connection. That's fine, it's that one. Oops. It already looked like, yeah, it's got a gap in it for sure. What is it, a... Eh? Four amps, so it's a decent rating. I'll just leave it in there, I think it says on the board. Uh, so I would guess DC on one channel. I guess I probably should, before I do anything, tip those output devices. Looks like the whole bottom comes off this easy enough. If there's an old just blown fuse and you know something's... There's probably going to be DC on one of the outputs. Someone would have no doubt tried another fuse in it, especially someone who had a collection of this audio gear. I don't know, but at least it doesn't look like it was just a technician that had hoarded right off because that's kind of what the pile looked like it might have just been someone who collected old stuff back in the day and may have even been stuff they used and abused and it broke down and they never got it fixed and they just got another one back when this stuff was going for next to nothing but I did like Atashi stuff so I couldn't resist this one even though it was quite expensive to buy in un in non-working condition, but given the price, some people were asking for stuff that wasn't too bad. It was around the same price as that Sony, about $50 or something. And yeah, it's got the same yellow sort of print like their televisions had. And definitely been a bit of a hot area around there. I think that's, yeah, two, two TO220 transistors, I guess regulators or something. Yeah, actually, I want it on kind of newer that are sitting on a heatsink, I'll just check them while I'm at it too. Pretty unlikely they're actually blown, but definitely wants resoldering in that area. Those joints are quite dry. And what I'm interested in really is the outputs. If we go to these screws and then the other two pins, we shouldn't get a short anywhere. Preferably from that base pin we should get. Ooh, that's quite low, that's a capacitor I think. I'm not getting a short circuit yet. Those are just on a basic test without going any further. They all seem fine. Well, yeah, it's just going to have a blown fuse in it. It can't be that easy. But, best thing I guess is to apply power and at least see if the transformer and everything's working in this thing. The other common test is turn the power on 
and just check you've got continuity because you've just got a transformer winding assuming the switch is intact and the main power fuse is intact uh, turn the volume down that's balance well we've got a red light on the front no smoke coming out so let's go to DC Meter's getting in a knot, I assume that switch is probably good ground, or we can always use the RCA sockets. Minus 1.4. It's got nothing. So that would be the output. Oop, there goes that tape deck. Let me just check this. The Sansui stopped before I reach in, that's a worry. I mean, it is a 90 minute tape, I know. Could it be too much tension or something? It hasn't been used in years, so we'll see. Okay, so there's like a little bit of charge there, but nothing serious. Let me just double check to the back panel or something. Yeah, basically nothing there. Just the fact that the fuse is blown could mean there's a little residual voltage because it's not connected to other things, but yeah, it's all dissipated pretty much. Okay. Well, that's odd. What we got in there? Is this something screwed on the heatsink? Could be a, a fuse or something to measure the temperature. I don't know if it's a thermal fuse or something. Mm. Sometimes they had transistors and stuff attached to the heatsinks to give thermal feedback. Hmm, measure it's kind of like a diode. Who knows? Could be a diode of some sort. Does it have a. Q704, that's probably the output transistor. It is an S802, whatever that is, SW and something in Japanese. No idea. Oops, it stopped again that tape deck. I reckon it's the tension in that tape. So maybe it can stop due to too much tension or something. Probably triggering the auto stop. Uh, I was just going to check what are our capacitors doing? Discharged, mostly discharged. Only under a volt there, 800 millivolts. Okay. Oh, well, we'll just put a fuse in it and hook some dummy loads up. Is the safest bet. I'm thinking is since this is potentially faulty on that channel I'll just put a one amp fuse in there I've just got to remember I might even mark that in black or something just to remind me because you don't want to send that out if I'm gonna sell it or something or if it was a customer's job definitely don't want it going back with a one amp fuse because if they crank it up at all that'll blow just because it's underrated for the job but if you think there's a DC output fault or something better to blow that quickly it doesn't hurt to pop a one amp fuse quickly because just on low volume it shouldn't be a problem but if there is still a fault somewhere you may avoid other damage by blowing the fuse quickly so I'll put some of these dummy loads on it and see if anything blows then if not we can test it with some speakers probably See if it actually sounds any good. I mean, all this test is the output for DC that could be distortion or anything yet. But generally, these Hitachi sort of things are pretty reliable stuff. Not really that well known for audio gear at Hitachi, I don't think, but they did make a few boom boxes and bits and pieces over the years. I think they might have done a few CD players and stuff, but you didn't didn't see a lot of their gear. Just making sure there's nothing that this can short on. Well, I didn't see anything go flash or anything, so hopefully our fuse is still intact. Zero and zero. Didn't blow that. 
Well, that's a bit crazy if that's all that's wrong with it, surely not. I kind of hoped it would have an interesting fold in it, but I don't mind if it's just a fuse either. Oh well, I guess we'll plug some audio into it. You never know, mate, could have any fault still. Tuna. Get rid of the dummies. Uh, turn that other amp off. These screw terminals make it so much slower to actually connect and disconnect. At least the later, most of the later amps with these type of terminals, the surround ones and that, they do have the ability so you can fit banana plugs straight in there. But unfortunately with most of those amps they're pretty horrible to work on because they've got so much stuff in them. They're overly complicated and even worse, you can fix them but getting to the access to the boards and stuff's a pain too. So I try and avoid them, I think most people do, but they can be repaired. I think I've changed a digital to analog converter or something in one for someone. And a couple other small faults in them over the years, but... but the only good thing about them is you can make up some leads with banana plugs and disconnect them, connect them quickly to the ch different channels, but... These old ones are slow, but easy to fix as well. Now I did turn the volume down, didn't I? Got the little noise through the speakers. I can hear something in the background already. Ooh. So the first thing I want to do is clean the volume control. That's no shocker there. Now where's the pot? Oh, nice open, really open is on this one. It's just got great big holes where the um, loudness tab thing comes out the top. No wonder it's scratchy though, because it great big holes there. Any old dust is going to go in there. It's not that dusty in here, but there's a bit on some of the boards, so that's probably why. Actually, I should have, before I do that, should have thought, give it a good run through the range. It's actually a little, is that a little wonky? Just, oh, it's just this knob's got a bit of play in it. I thought the actual shaft might have been bent. There it is. Something a little bit iffy with that knob. Yeah, if I got that the right position, not quite. I think that's just a bit loose. Yeah, it is a bit... Sometimes you find these metal bits are coming off them. Not in this case. That's, I don't know what it probably just wants. Sometimes you just got to bend these little spline parts open very carefully because they will break off if you're not careful. But just spread them apart a bit. And that should make it a tighter fit. Yeah, it's pretty good now. Still a little bit more play than I would have thought, but... Hmm. I don't think it's actual sharp playing in the... Pot. It's just something to do with the way the knob fits, might need a little bit more of a bend. Turn the volume down again before you apply power. It's a bit slow to get going, but that's better. Low filter. Well, that seems alright. The treble's a bit scratchy. The base is definitely scratchy. Okay, the battery or card or something ran out, so I abandoned this, but I did manage to get it cleaned up. And I must say, probably needs a bit of different focus for that. This amp has one of the nicest front panels I've seen. A bit more than just the usual brushed aluminium, it really catches the light, this one. Uh, given their knobs a basic clean up, they still need more, but it looks a ton better. It's just a shame it's got some scratches there, a couple of light ones on the front. I think there's a couple here, a few on the top here. Don't know if they're ever going to be able to be got rid of. 
which is a shame, but I may be able to polish them out a little bit without affecting the metal. But yeah, a lovely finish on the front. And I forget what I even got to with this. I think something was still a bit scratchy on it. And I was going to clean maybe some of the other pots. Now I think maybe I did do the other pots. I think the other thing I noticed with this, it's got quite a good loudness control on it. When it doesn't make the CD player skip. Yeah, actual loudness control does quite a good job on this one. Some of them don't really do a great job, but this does make it sound quite a bit better. So I think mainly now all I really had to do was go over some of these dry joints and stuff. I guess I should check a few of these capacitors and see what sort of condition they're in. Bit of typical corrosion on the legs of that chip. I think that's what it is, or is it just part of the plastic package? Some of these go a bit tarnished over time. Not sure what that is. It might be a phono preamp. I'm guessing something like that. Given all the sockets come in, you can almost trace them from the what they show you here. But I might just check a few of these caps just to get an idea. If they're still good, most of them nicely designed this because most of them are away, only that one's away from the heat sinks. So that big one there's right up against the 5 watt resistor. This other one here is up against the transistors on the heat sink. But again, these old ones are usually so well built. Normally wouldn't expect any of the lower ones in the lower signal paths and stuff out on these open boards to have failed at all, but you never know. But I reckon that one looks like it's actually a bipolar. 47. And that is a 100 mic. Now oh, we've got another little HA chip in here. So Hitachi busy using their own semiconductors. And there is a relay in here. I thought it had a slight delay when I turned it on. Quite a delay, really. So that's on. So we do have speaker protection by the look of it, which is always a good feature to have. So I didn't really need to test the DC outputs on this, or DC on the outputs on this, I guess, because it's already got the protection in there. But I didn't know that at the time. Get the ESR meter off, so I get the multimeter and just... Actually, I've got to fix that multimeter, haven't I? It needs a new battery. Just check those big filter caps have discharged nicely that one has and that one has too oh there's an electro shoved under the board here and a couple other bits and so maybe they had to modify a few things they didn't get quite right a few ceramic caps usually a sign they didn't get the circuit working 100 percent in the prototype or whatever and then they've had to modify it slightly afterwards which would have been a pain during the production run now, there was a capacitor, be that one right there, I reckon, C805, is it? I think that's what it says. That would be that 100 mic, 0.3, so that's pretty good. And where did I see the other one? It was in amongst, I wonder if it's that one there, C807. Would it be that lower valley? Right next to the fuses. That's the one. It almost looks like it may have been resoldered or replaced at some stage. Now where were these other little electrodes up the front of the board? I mean, there's a couple near the big filter caps. C806 there. 0.2. 0.3, yeah, no, they're all looking fine. As you'd expect. I don't really see much point in recapping these things if they're all running fine. 
I can see why people want to do it for peace of mind or whatever. But again, most unless it's an amp that's known to have caps fail in it, there's probably not much point. But of course, you can do it if you want to. That ain't no cap. Was it there? Maybe. Yeah, no, they all seem to be fine. As expected, I mean, it's a Tashi. But what I will do is go over some of these solder joints, I think. Another reason to make sure the caps are discharged, other than your own safety, is you don't want to go soldering, putting the soldering iron on and soldering things. If there's voltage in there, you may blow something. They actually look like they might have been resoldered, those two regulator type chip uh, transistors on a heatsink. These joints here are definitely starting to look a little iffy. So generally the best thing to do is anything that someone else hasn't already done, is do it again. That's probably the hottest area of the board right there. I might do that a little, whatever it is, just a link I think. Oops, dropped a bit of solder in there, that's no good. Those are probably alright, but I'll give them a quick... Anything that looks a bit dull or anything. And these transistors here I think are worth... Redoing that one wasn't the greatest. Not even sure what they are, but I'll do them anyway because I see like a TA220 style case or something. Three flat pins in a row. Always a bit heavier parts that can move, get vibration and heat and stuff to shake them a bit loose. I think there must be some sort of driver transistors or something. I like to resolder them and they usually run fairly hot, but these are showing no signs of having been hot. So this amp's a really nice spaced out board. Nothing shows any signs of being hot in it, besides that one little area there. Yeah, everything looks actually pretty good in this thing. Probably should really move that metal bracket out of the way so I can see everything but given these parts aren't that one I don't really like but that's just been done in the factory a little a little light on the solder but unless an area's been hot there's really no point worrying about it too much especially if it's a got good solder I don't think their televisions or anything were ever known for dry joints the Hitachi's probably got some but not especially known like say Philips or something for bad soldering Though even a lot of the Phillips stuff looked worse than it actually was. So that actually is not too bad. I might even put this thing back together and give it a bit of a test run. Best things give it a soak test, so just run it for a while and now I've got to remember which way this goes on because it's been like over a week since I last looked at it. That would be the way. At least the screw holes line up nicely. And let you know, and I will have to get another fuse for this because I think I had something close, but I've got to order some new fuses. My sort of four, five, and six amp type fuses have run out. So it's probably time to replace all the, the fuses I'm missing. I haven't really been much of a call for 3AG fuses for a long time, but. Now I'm playing around with a few of these amps. Oh, I guess I better get stocked up. Oops, that was a black washer I put there. That shouldn't be there, I don't think. But maybe someone already changed it. But yeah, unfortunately all these amps tend to be... Well, it's fortunate in a way, since I've probably paid about 50 bucks for this thing. I think it's... I'm glad it is repairable and nothing major. Because given someone had dumped a whole heap of stuff... Some of it work and some of it faulty. I thought this might have been the remains from some repair shop or something where they'd basically give it up because on things because they weren't worth fixing or had a difficult fault. It's always a risky run when you see a bunch of stuff together, but looks like someone just hoarded a bit of it and I mean, they basically just put this away once the fuse blew in it. They didn't even check the fuse, which is pretty odd. Normally, people at least. Check that much, 
but maybe it was someone with no technical ability or no desire to look in it. Oops, I don't know where that black washer came from, but anyway, I'll put that to one side. Oh, it's off the other, no, that's there, don't know. Print electric shock, no user serviceable parts of side pilot lamp, soldered in place. Well, the only pilot lamp it has is an LED, I think. I was just going to check that actually. So we've got that fuse there, yeah I'll put black marker on it, that's right, just to remind me. It should be a 4 amp, I think the closest I had was a 3.15, which would probably do for most situations. I mean I've only got a 1 amp or something in there and just turning it up at low volume hasn't worried it at all. I guess I should really take that dust out, I'll take it outside and dust it, but I think I'll wait until I get a, get a proper fuse for it. Should slot in under the front, I think. But I don't always want to do it. Anyway. That's a good solid bit of metal. So I'll get this thing and give it a good test. The front knobs could do with a bit more of a clean up. I gave them a scrub with a toothbrush and some metho. Or it might have been cleaning fluid, I forget now, but I can see where I've cleaned them is actually nice and bright but it's still a bit dull even where there wasn't obvious dirt but that came up a lot better than I was expecting but yeah, there's a few scratches on here unfortunately which are going a bit rusty but yeah nice nice amp other than that yep so I'll give that one a good test run and see how it goes and get that new 4 amp fuse I probably should put a sticker on this to remind me, but I usually remember these things. But anyway, thanks for watching.